So I'm trying to work out what she mean by taking name. Meaning she want to have a baby for this guy because he's handsome. Not because he has a job or he can mind a baby. It's about being handsome, good looking on our baby, got pretty and have long hair. Isn't that a serious I thing? I am telling you. Youths are perceived constantly as troublemakers in the community and are therefore excluded from participation in any planning process. How can you plan in a community and you don't include the youth? Youth must be a strong part of any planning. Now, let's look at the challenges of the community the hidden agenda of some leaders. Some leaders have vested interest in maintaining and encouraging the violence and the upsurge in community tensions by pushing division. These desires serve measure de as major deterrents to the development of the human and social capital. The communities and significantly impede the progress of growth or the individual and collective level. Every time you have a program, you have some, some leaders who try to label it. When we were doing all this work and meeting the groups, the next thing I know I hear, Grace, I care about man go hotel and full up them bellies to come back and kill people. Can you imagine these were our mediation time? This was the time when we were saying, let's put these guns down, let's talk. So these leaders want to have that sort of violence and this divisiveness. But because our youngsters are not able to reason, they are easily manipulated and they get involved into action because they think that that is what they are supposed to be doing. Persons recently released from prison and deportees who are not aware of the changes which have taken place during the period of their incarceration or migration typically return to the community with a desire to regain their power base if they were leaders. This creates additional tension in the community. Community leaders are sometimes slow to react when violence flares up. This delays the mediation process as youths are angry and reluctant to meet. When the anger is boiling over, it's difficult to get the youths together. So it is important when we work with the community, I said, well, if you feel like you want to do a man something, call Miss Madden. So they have my phone number and call me and say, you know, this man walking behind me. I said, well, okay, tomorrow morning when I come, we'll see how we can sort that out. Believe you me, it eases the pressure. So when they go back and somebody say, you fool, before you shot the man, he said, no, man, I'm Miss Madden, because them things ain't no okay. You see the woman there? She always tell man about them not to retaliate. Believe you me. So when you can take away the blame, from the youngster and put it on somebody else. It is important because it maintains his face. The sporadic upsurge of violence due to misunderstandings and hidden agendas of leaders. Oh, we said that. Linkages of gang leaders to other supportive groups outside of the community. This allows gangs to bring in unknown persons to help fight their wars the most serious part of the issues because the strangers who come in don't know the community persons and therefore they are subject to die. They don't know who they are retaliating against. They are just shooting people wildly. There are parents who do not take responsibility for their children. In other words, they have given over their authority to the television, cable and other sources of socialization. In addition, they show very little or no interest in their children's education and development. In other words, what they say to Miss Madden, Miss Madden, them know more than me, them have all 10 levels, what me can tell them say? So there's no guidance, they're expecting the children to guide themselves because they think they're educated. They forget that they have experience as parents and they must guide their children. As Challenges associated with law enforcement and politicians. Police are slow to react in some instances when there is an outbreak of violence. Social location, 
geographic and class-based prevents speedy and reliable intervention and assistance by the police to some residents. The perception at the grassroots is that the police only visit when persons are already dead and when the violence has escalated to the point of no return. In other words, they are only coming to kill and wipe out. As a man said to me two days ago, he said, Miss, you are killing a wipe out, I just the lizard tail that your papa for the head well entrenched. We need to think about that. That is something I thought that was such a clear vision by that man. But notwithstanding the challenges that we have faced, we are going to go into happier moments. Our successes. Over the years, the foundation has been able to successfully support sustainable community development at all levels. The foundation has been able to educate youths and provide educational programs and support for all age levels, provide counseling, support health care, finance skills training programs, provide employment, build human and social capital within the community, relieve poverty through its various programs, and facilitate at all levels capacity building and governance within the community, be it going to workshops, be it keeping workshops. We have a book called One Small Move, which our parent body has designed and done, and I am told that it is now very popular even in Grenada. It is being utilized. With a focus on education, the foundation has been able to see a number of successes, which includes 2003 to 2010, 131 female students and 90 male students were assisted financially and otherwise with their CXC examinations with both groups boasting over 74% subject pass rate, pa pass rate. Additionally, 82 females and 42 males being assisted with CAPE, with CAPE examination, with both groups boasting an 84.6% and an 83.1% subject pass rate, respectively. Our children are doing well. A total of 3,948 individuals have been assisted through high school and up to tertiary level by the Grace and Staff Community Development Foundation between the periods 1983 to 2010. For skills training within the period 2004 to 2009, 227 females and 225 males participated in the foundation's skill training program via the Human Employment and Resource Training Agency, whereby certification within their area of interest was the objective in order to make them employable. All participants from 2004 to 2008 completed their heart training successfully and are now employed at various levels. Our short-term employment program is very important to community. When communities are out of work for one entire year, when Easter, holidays, there is need for money. Children look forward to Christmas. And regardless of who we are and where we are, Christmas is a happy time for children, and we need to give a, lend a helping hand. It, we have provided for community individuals within the summer and Christmas periods. And in 2004 to 2010, the foundation provided 220 males and 227 females with summer employment program. That is our high school students, our fifth and sixth formers, who go out through Grace Kennedy to be employed in social agencies. Also for the same period, including 2003, 
739 males and 368 females were provided with work over the Christmas season. Additionally, the Christmas outreach program administered within this period, 2003 to 2010, has seen a total of 5,650 food baskets distributed to Golden Ages across several inner city communities. <laughs> 